Hello everyone and welcome to a review of Murder Pocket Party. Today we're going to have a look and briefly discuss the two currently available ones. We've got Deadly Sin and then we've got The Curtain Falls. We're not going to touch on too much detail but I'll go through roughly how the games work, how it integrates with the app, etc. and then how it works in the two different modes when you're co-op or actually using this as very much a small murder mystery. So let's dive in and just know that I was provided these two for the review. Booting up the free to download app you're going to choose one of the murder pocket parties. You're going to go for Deadly Sin or The Curtain Falls and you're going to then input how many players you're playing with. If you're going with one or two players, you'll be playing it as a sort of co-op experience, finding out all of the clues and then trying to work out who did it. If you're playing with three to six players, well, that's when you're actually going to be not only each sort of taking up the role of one of the characters in the story, but you're going to be working out maybe which one of among you did the murder. And that's a really cool sort of thing that you get from normal murder mysteries, but it's interesting that there's two sort of gameplay options if you've got the player count or not for a murder mystery. The app's going to do a few things that would normally be put on players in a murder mystery, sort of reading the story and such. Well, the app does that in terms of the prologue, and it also, certainly for when you've not got the full player count, helps you set the game up and tells you which characters to use and which to have their clues just placed currently face down in the middle of the table. It also very much, if you're playing these as a one or two player game, it will tell you how to set that up so all of the clues are on the table face down and when to reveal them. After the prologue and a few other little bits and pieces, there's going to be some intervals. There's three of them and just before each, each player will be given a clue. If you're playing it solo, you'll reveal all of the number one clues, then the number two clues according to the interval. Those intervals are not really sort of time to break apart, they are time to discuss. Because the clues that you're given, you're probably gonna wanna talk about that. Hang on a minute, I've seen this character over here doing something a bit dodgy. So it's clues that really paint the other people around the table in a bit of bad light and certainly if you're trying to get away with something, you're wanting to make all eyes be on that other player. So as the game progresses, after each interval there's a little bit more dialogue, maybe a few new facts come to life, and then you're going to be getting more clues as well as some more intervals to talk. And at the end of the game, regardless if you're, if you're doing it cooperatively or as a murder mystery, you're going to need to answer some questions as a group. Effectively, the game is saying you don't want to get the wrong person and you really don't want to try and convict an innocent person. And who do you think did it? Maybe why they did it, how they did it, and a few questions just to sort of see if you can get it right. It then does reveal all and you'll find out yay or nay if you were right or wrong, who did it, so you're not left in the dark. And that's sort of, again, all read out by the app, so one character, or one player, sorry, around the table isn't having to read a really long extensive thing, it's revealed to everyone around the table from the app. And well, that is how you play Murder Pocket Party. It's very much driven by the app to allow extra story and a lot of the setup to be explained to you because in the box, well, there's pretty much just a deck of cards, quite large tarot-y sort of style shaped sized cards and often with illustrations of scenes of these clues that you're going to be going, hmm, well I saw this happen, so I think they're dodgy. Maybe it was you that did the murder, and stuff like that. So let's start off with that production quality, and wow, these are incredibly small, thin, very portable, put in your bag, put almost in your pocket, murder pocket party games. They last just under an hour, we've played one of them, we played Deadly Sin as a co-op between two of us and we played The Curtain Falls between four of us as a murder mystery to sort of play the two versions and they both took just around that hour mark sort of thing 
And that was with a few sort of skippings, the last minutes of the interlude as we've sort of gone, okay, I think we've finished discussing, let's get some more clues sort of thing. So the production quality from the cards, that's really cool. It sort of very much, if you're a character, tells you exactly sort of what your character knows, what they don't want other people to know. And very clearly, whether you, if you are the murderer, you don't want to, you don't want them to find out. You want to get away with this sort of thing. And then your clues, I really like those illustrations. They bring the little scenes to life. And actually, when we were doing The Deadly Sin, one of those drawings had just a small, tiny detail on it that we noticed and we twigged about something that was on another card and that gave sort of the game up of who we thought the murderer was. But they do a really good job of bringing those scenes to lives on those cards. And while we're talking about that, actually, there's so many little details, often none of the characters involved say, actually turn out to be that nice or whatever. Often everyone has done something maybe they're a little ashamed of or a little bit naughty, but some obviously have murdered and some haven't. So <laughs> there's definitely levels, but there's definitely things that all of, like no character wants everything to be sort of explained about themselves because if it puts you in a bad light and someone can twist it, maybe they're the murderer and they're going to get away with it because everyone's now looking firmly at you. So everyone has like a reason they might have murdered the person in the sort of typical murder mystery fashion. And it's only those little details, some that might be red herrings, some that might actually just help you work out who really did it. Some people might be put off a little bit by the fact that the game does utilise an app. And to be honest, you'd need a full on massive booklet for the amount of text that it does have and reads out loud to you. Some apps I well, in games like this, I think let them down where it's just you tap through and you have to read it out. But because it actually has the voice lines and brings those characters to life, like the commissioner that is, you sort of is solving the case and uh, hopefully finding out who the murderer is and you're kind of sort of helping along. Well, I think that's really nice that it voices all that and it does allow the game to be a very much small box. And then you just, as long as you've pre-downloaded the app, you can play it pretty much anywhere as long as you can hear the app going and stuff like that. There's very little that you really need to see the app for. So as long as someone's got the phone, playing the, the sort of the commissioner talking about what they've found at the scene, etc. Everyone's getting the information. I really do like that. It just meant that one person's not put on the spot and by the end of it has a really hoarse throat because they've been talking and reading so much extra dialogue. One thing that you have to say is that these are very much one and done, like an escape room, like any other murder mystery. Once you've worked out who did it, well, unless you can forget that, you're going to not need to play the experience again. But nothing in the boxes is used up, nothing is um, ruined or destroyed in any way. So once you've finished it, definitely be, oh well, I'm definitely going to be passing these on to some friends that didn't get to play it with us because I think they're going to have a lot of fun going through them, either as that co-op or as a murder mystery party. Now let's touch on those two different versions. I think when you're doing it together, so we play Deadly Sin together, when you're seeing all of the clues, it felt like it was very much the narrative was being told to us and then we were trying to deduce things from the cards and it was a good experience. It felt like a, a very much a narrative somewhat deduction game. Um, but I think I do prefer this as a murder mystery. And I think, well, mur it's, it's murder pocket party. Murder mystery is kind of, I think, what this is really aimed for. But I like the fact that if you don't have that player count, you could still enjoy this. And some people might prefer to play it through as co-op. For me, though, having the sort of a character card where you've got information that other players don't and you're not trying to let them find out, but maybe it comes out in one of the clues they give away. Oh, that doesn't make me look very good. But what can I say about someone else? I think that was great fun. And it, it really does feel like a murder mystery that you'd... You'd go for this murder mystery thing with booklets and everything 
but you've not got any of that and it's so much shorter. You can play it in an evening where it doesn't feel like you've had to do this, right, we're doing a murder mystery evening. Well, it's just, oh, there's a few of us together, let's play a, a murder mystery sort of thing for an hour. It just feels a little less sort of um, pressured that you'd need to make a big event to do a murder mystery when it's, it's small, portable and, well, pretty good fun as well. One final thing that did let the game down a little bit, there was a couple of times where we did notice that I think maybe there's a translation, it's just it feels a bit off. Um, I'm assuming it's a translation maybe from Italian into English. And there was a couple of times where the wording just sort of, it, it didn't quite flow how you would expect it to in English, if that makes sense, on one of the cards. There were a couple of times like that when there was a, something and it was like, okay, that, I think that's what they meant here. Um, very few and far between. But just know there's one or two little things like that. And I think they're translational issues, or not really issues, but translational oddities. So overall, we have really enjoyed these murder pocket parties. I do hope they do more because, well, these two, for us, we've played them, we've enjoyed them, and I think we'd very happily get more of them to the table. The stories are interesting. The characters certainly all have a bit of a motive to do the murder and it's up to you to try and work it out and that's exactly what you want from a murder mystery and the fact that the box is small the app reads a load of the dialogue like the prologues and all that stuff out to you so it's not necessarily putting one person on the spot to be that narrator person i think it all comes together really well i was really impressed with that and yeah like i say I definitely want to see more from the Murder Pocket Party line because it's it's good and I'd, I want more. Then let me know in the comment section below if you've had the privilege of playing these. What did you think? Let us know in the comment section below. And until next time, have a murdering good day?